everyone welcome back to my channel so today i have another watch me work video i mean it's not really work if it's on family is it i don't know but today's video is me doing my baby sister's nail so leave her a little heart emoji or little sister emoji for my sister being open to having me record doing her nails her little baby nails for this process i did these a while back these actually i think she started school with these nails so what a you know what a fun way to start school cool way i don't think many kids you know her age have a little holographic flame encapsulated gel nails so she's definitely unique in that aspect so this is her previous overlay i'll call it a set but it is an overlay on her natural nails which actually most of my clients do have their natural nails um, they grow out really long if you just, you know, found my page. But a lot of the Watch Me Work videos I do are over my client's natural nails. Now, these are her nails after, I want to say, six or eight weeks. Like a long time. I really want to say eight weeks. Because, yeah, <laughs> they were there a long time. You see, she was missing one and one was lifting. But other than that, they were holding on strong. So I'm definitely cutting the length down. I'm using the um red baron bit from atwood industries it's a very aggressive bit you want to use it at a very high speed and it takes down products so easily now i'm using this bit because i want to take all this product up it was an encapsulated gel ombre i want all this glitter gone because we're you know going straight nude with our flame decal so because she has hard gel hard gel doesn't soak off um there are builder gels that do soak off, but what she has doesn't, it's light elegant, so it needs to be filed down if you wanna completely remove it. You have to be very careful not to damage or file into the client's natural nails. If you're not comfortable with that aggressive bit, once you get close, I would go in like I am with a car, with a um, sanding band or this cross cut bit. This cross cut bit basically mimics a sanding band. It has um, cross hatching in the pattern, and that's just to relieve heat from building up. Other than that, there's no teeth, no flutes. It's basically a sanding band. So once I get that product close, and I know I'm not touching the nail with the Red Baron, but it's real low, I go in with this, and I'm basically filing the remainder of that product, but be, being so very careful not to file into her natural nail. I don't wanna damage her nails at all. So I took that product real low. It's not 100% off, so if you see inconsistencies in the nail plate, that's where product is and isn't. But her nail is perfectly fine and safe if you're concerned. Now we're going in with the skiver bit, and this is to remove the cuticle off of the nail plate, which is the dead skin that grows on the nail plate. That has to be gone in order for our nails to last any amount of time. Next, I'm going with the round bit from Atwood Industries. And I'm just using this to kick off any of that dead skin on her actual living skin, her epinichium and, you know, where you get hang nails. Just trying to buff that down. I don't want to cut anything. So I'm just gently buffing. And all these clips are sped up, so it looks much more aggressive than it is. So once I do that to all her nails, I'm going in and I'm cleansing them with acetone. The acetone will dehydrate the nail and help sanitize the nail. And it helps us prepare for our base gel, which is the gel bottle inks clear rubber base this product is amazing it's so amazing it keeps the nails on so so long so you will see me using this with gel products all the time and i'm not sure if they're sold out now or not but definitely go check so i'm just polishing this on to her natural nail just like you would any regular polish i'm keeping it thin i'm not trying to build this is our base so we dehydrated the nail and we're going in, this is our base. This is basically kind of like our primer, but it is cured in the light. So I'll go ahead and cure that and I'm gonna use Cosmetic Pink Builder from Light Elegance and this number four alpha brush. This is a smaller one, which is perfect for her little small nail beds. Um, definitely check out alpha brush. I love their gel brushes. So I'm just applying this very thin to begin with. I'm polishing it on. I'm not building anything. You see, I'm just using simple brush strokes from the cuticle area all the way down to the free edge. Once I get to the free edge, I want to go ahead and bulk that up just a little bit, one for coverage of her natural nail. Um, but I want to keep the cuticle area very thin because that's where we're placing our flames and we don't want 
these small bulky nails that I find is the challenge a lot of times people face with the doing small nail beds or short nails or a combination of the both is trying to find out how to put a design in such a small space that space without it looking bulky and too big and you have to be really strategic in how you do things so again I'm leaving it very very thin with this product towards the cuticle area because that's where we're gonna only we stick in the flames there and we're encapsulating them and have to make sure they're protected so you want to keep that thin so I'm taking a little more product and building up that coverage towards the free hitch of her nail and then I'm going to go ahead and cure that in the light so after I cure in the light, I'm going to go ahead and take some alcohol or some gel cleanser and wipe the inhibition or tacky layer from the nail. If you don't do this before you stick the stickers, they will not stick. They'll get all gunky with that, that layer. So you want to make sure you cleanse that off before you use your flame stickers that you're going to buy from artistickoi.com. Um, go ahead and check out The Painted Koi on Instagram. She has some great patterns, especially just in time for the holiday season. So these are her baby flames. I think they're called baby flames or mini flames. I'm not sure, but these are the smaller ones. Perfect for shorter nails. So I'm just taking some tweezers and placing these flames exactly how I want them. Now, if you want to do the flames from the free edge up towards the cuticle area, basically flip it. Um, when you're applying the gel, you basically do the opposite. You don't want to bulk it up at the cuticle area, but you would apply more coverage towards the cuticle area and leave the free edge portion thinner. That way you have space to um, encapsulate your flame. So I'm just applying these flames and some of them are a little bit longer or they may not fit. So I'm just customizing them by cutting them where need be. Like this one was too long for her, her thumb, but I wanted to use it so i just applied it where it fit and i'm cutting off the excess with some nippers and trying to make sure i kind of contour around the cuticle area so it still looks like it you know fits very well has that horseshoe shape make sure i'm not cutting my client aka my sister i don't want to harm anybody i don't want to see anybody's blood related or not <laughs> i don't so be very cautious when you're doing that not to cut yourself or your client and so it's just simple as me sticking the sticker. Some of them are, you know, simple with just one sticker. And some of them I kind of, you know, jazz up a little. So I'm going in with the Clear Cool Gel from Light Elegance. And I'm using this to encapsulate our flame. Now, you want to first add a slip layer. This is how I prefer. Add your slip layer which is just polishing it on. And then you're gonna go ahead and take a bigger bead like you see me doing now and float it over the nail. And you just wanna just float that product. It's going to self-level. So keep that in mind. But that's really the, beautif the beauty in Builder Gel is that it self-levels. There's not a lot of filing going on. And if you do have to file, it's so soft. You can correct whatever inconsistencies you have so easily because it's so simple to file. It's really a great product, especially if you're a nail tech who's, I mean, I, I recommend it to any nail tech, but if your concern is all the filing and the manual, you know, back and forth, this is a great product because it reduces how much pressure you have to apply when you're filing or shaping and how much you actually have to file and shape because of the self-leveling. So you can see I'm just using the very tip of that brush to float the product. And this is sped up again, so it looks way more crazier than it is. You want to be gentle, very light touch. Just use the tip of that brush to manipulate it. Get your apex where you want it. Move the product where you need it and get the coverage that you want. So again, this is the slip layer. And this just tells the gel, like, where do I need to go? You apply your slip layer. Do not cure it. Leave it wet. Because now when you take that bigger bead, it's like, okay, okay, this is where I go. This is where I flow to. <laughs> it's just a guide and it basically lets that bigger bead slip to where it needs to go. I don't know if that's why it's called a slip layer, but that's in my head, I made that up. <laughs> so that's a slip layer. And I'm just looking from all different angles to make sure I got you know her little apex in there. And next I'm shaping her nails. The shape we generally go for is a rounded square. So it comes square from the sidewall straight out, but the free edge is rounded. And 
She doesn't. I asked her, did she want to do square straight across? And she didn't want to. And honestly, I don't think that'd be the most flattering for her finger. If she was a little bit older and would, would, could, or wanted to grow her nails out longer, I'd probably recommend like an almond shape. I think that would be more flattering, especially shorter. I think, and this is just my opinion, that if you have to do shorter nails, something that's more rounded, almond, oval, even maybe a little baby stiletto, I think those are more flattering than square can be sometimes or coffin, especially coffin at a short length. But that's just my opinion. Just something to consider, guys. So um, after I went and filed her nail, I'm using the crosscut bit. Again, this is like a sanding band. This is not going to take a lot of product off fast. And you don't want to use it at a super fast speed. I'm just going in and smoothing out the nail. You can see I'm rubbing it with my thumb. I'm making sure there's no none of the sticker poking out, which it shouldn't be because we've encapsulated it well. And I'm making sure that there's no lumps and bumps. And I'm doing all that by feeling around with my thumb. Again, this cross cut bit is from Atwood Industries and this is the large barrel. And I'm not sh I think there's only one grit that they have, but definitely check them out. I love this bit. This is like, holy grail. If you could have one bit, this would be it because you could prep with this bit. You can file and shape with this bit and you can buff with this bit. So if I only had to have one, it would be this one. But of course, there's other bits better suited for those tasks. But this is this is a good bit. Definitely pick it up. Tell Atwood Industries I sent you for sure. I love it. So after I go in and finish file the surface, we don't need to buff because we've basically did all this in one step. It leaves a nice like buff texture when you use the sanding band. And th these are the results. And we're ready to, to top coat at this point. So um, sometimes when I top coat encapsulated designs, I like to use either protein bond or you can use light elegance tack. Um, either one you have is absolutely fine. It will make it where the, um, the top coat doesn't pull away from the cuticle area. Sometimes it could separate or pull away. And it'll also help fill in the ridges that we've done or added with buffing and it'll give it the clarity of the nail, especially when encapsulating designs or glitters or anything like that, something you want to be shiny and clear, it'll kind of fill in any ridges. We need those ridges to hold our top coat and our polish. We need that little, you know, not real deep, but what we do when we buff, we need that there, but also we don't want to show them. So uh, I'm applying the light elegance tack and it, it's a product that needs to cure. Protein bond doesn't, so you can use protein bond in this instance. And then after I cure it or let the protein bond dry for 10 to 15 seconds, I'm going in with my top coat. And as you've seen, I'm using the Opre gel top coat. It's a really good top coat. I have no problems with it. It's no white. And you can see I turned off the lighting so you can really see that holographic effect and how cute they are. My little sister needs to moisturize her little cuticle area, but we're not going to talk about her because we love her. Also, do y'all remember when she said my mom's nails look like throw up? If you remember, put a little throw up emoji below. <laughs> All right, you guys, this is her final belated back to school look. <laughs> her little baby flames. Again, the flames are from artistickoi.com. Um, I'm sure you've seen them everywhere, but she has new designs. Hopefully I'll get to use some soon to show you guys. She got some Halloween ones, um, some kind of fall ones. Um, she doesn't yet. But I'm sure she'll have, you know, Christmas and everything like that. Just some really cool effects and designs. So I really want to thank you guys for watching today. Leave any questions or comments below. Did you like this video on a shorter set of nails? Did this help you out? You know, I do a lot of long, long nails. So hopefully this is for my short nail girls. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and like, subscribe. Bye.